Welcome back to this turbo conversion on an NA8 Mazda MX-5 as I go ham-fisted and fumble my way through my first turbo conversion. Oddly enough, considering my history, this is only my first one. Really strange. In any case, uh, same shirt because, well, yeah, still the same day from the closing of the last video. I don't have the head studs, um, those exhaust manifold studs. I'm going to try and do a couple of the other things and get those out of the way while I wait on those parts. What can we do though? Well, we can drill this up, the bit that's scaring me the most, okay? Uh, we can connect up an oil feed that'll feed the turbo. This is just a, an oil-cooled journal bearing turbo. It's not ball bearing and it's not water cooled, so I don't need to worry about coolant lines. We can do that. What else can we do? Mm, EGR tube needs to be crimped. Um, it's better to blank it off or just do a reroute, but you can also get away with just crimping it and blanking it off on the more accessible side. We're gonna try and do that as well. Maybe not in this video, but that is something that we need to do. What else can we do? Well, oddly enough, that's about it. Um, that's the core of it until those studs arrive, then I can mount those up. The intercooler and all the plumbing, that's all done. That's sitting ready to get bolted up. Um, and then just running a couple of vacuum lines and maybe adding the boost controller. But I'd want everything in place before I start doing that. Then of course, there is a question of the downpipe. Um, I do not have the welder and all the welding skills to be able to create one of those. So I will have to leave that in the hands of the professionals. Um, we can also do a little bit of the preparation for heat management in and around. Um, but I think the oil feed and return, those are probably the two biggest ones. So let's see if we can do those. Yeah, bite the bullet, let's do it. In preparation for this build, I sorted the components into various boxes. This is pretty much oil feed and return. So in there we have specially ordered drill bit, which I have fitted to my cordless drill. Um, had to get a tapered shank and had to get a large enough chuck on a cordless drill. Um, this new one actually has plenty of torque and will do just fine. It's also nice and slim line so it can get into the small places. In this box, let's take a look at what we have here. We have a variety. We have a variety of things. So this is the T union that I am going to be tapping into where the oil pressure switches. Uh, difficult to get to. I'm hoping that I can get everything in there that I need to. Really not accessible with the intake manifold still in place. All right, and then. We have this, does this go on that end? Yes, yes it does. Okay, this braided line and the guys at Laser Hydraulics made up this connection for me, braised it and everything, and that's going to go into the turbocharger. I'm going to double check that everything fits now before I start drill drilling. This will run around the back of the engine and should hopefully feed me all the I really don't like the way that that fits. I'll check that out. Okay, and feed the turbo. Return line with our bung that's going to go into the sump. Okay, and that will fit on there and that will be a nice, thick, hefty, large diameter return line. Um, random housing. Then, another bit that I need to check is, uh, got an industrial tap. And we'll check that these are the correct threads before I start drilling. And that needs to be the same as that on that end, so. Mate them up, and um, yeah, that looks about right. Can't check it that way. All right, a little more confident, getting there, but bub it. The mark is going to be roughly over there. So I do not have the aircon compressor here, 
which would make this return line go considerably lower. So what I need to do is I need to come about 30 mils down, which is about 33 mils actually is what they recommend. Okay, and then from the front, they say 33 in. Now that's not going to be entirely possible, but let's see if we can get in there. Okay, what we will do is we've got our mark there and we will place that there. Two things that we're going to do here is we're going to leave the oil in as recommended so that when you drill the oil that is coming out will help push shavings out. We're also going to coat the drill bit in grease and that is going to help it uh, catch any of the shavings. We're going to go pretty slowly and because the pickup line runs right behind where we're drilling we need to stop this massive thing from penetrating too far. And to do that, we're going to need to use this. Slip that over there, and then I can only use nay much of the drill. And uh, hopefully, that little bit isn't going to be enough to uh, actually get it to penetrate. So, let's give it a smash. Nervous, not going to lie. So that I can see what I'm doing first. Just get it chased. Let's clean that out and re-grease it. And I believe we are through. And clean. No oil coming out. Maybe I need it to top up. Oops. Let me show you how effective that is. That's captured so many of the particles, if I can focus. Um, and it stopped me from going too deep. So I'm fairly happy with that. That's a pretty straight, clean, neat hole there. Success so far, now just to tap it. Okay, so the hole in the sump is a success. Got it in the spot where I marked it. It's clean, that's actually pretty damn straight. Now just to tap it, I'm going to use the same sort of method where we throw some grease on it, just to catch all the filings. Try and keep this as straight as possible during this process. Okay, let's pull this out and clean it up again. Some nice threads there. Steal your light quickly. <clears throat> oh, 
Ooh, okay. Could actually go quite deep. Oh. Uh, a few very small shavings. Okay. All right. According to the internet, and the internet knows best, doesn't it always? Whatever doesn't get caught by the grease. will get, will struggle to be, get picked up off the floor of the sump. What does get picked up off the floor of the sump, first needs to make it through the strainer. What manages to make it through the strainer, then needs to make it through the oil filter as well. So, don't need to worry too much about too many shavings getting into this sump. So we've got shavings higher up. Oh wait, new grease. And there we go. I think that is us. There you can see all the shavings that have been caught. Can see a few little shavings there. Maybe even just stick a, a finger or something with a little bit of uh, maybe a Q-tip, a little bit of grease on it, and just clean that out additionally. I'd call that a success. Now, because I'm not the smartest peanut in the packet, I didn't show you the threading of that bung into the oil pan, how I sealed it, and how I connected up the oil feed. In fact, if you pay close enough attention, you'll notice that this outro is being recorded nearly a month after the fact. Yeah, not my greatest moment in terms of YouTube video creation. But it is done. And it's fairly successful so far. Next up though, in the step and in this process of doing the turbo conversion is getting oil to the turbo. So that was quite the challenge. So check out the next video where I'm going to take you through what needs to be done in order to get the oil feed to the turbo installed, or at least what I had to do. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you next time.